Good morning and welcome to CFC. We ask that all visitors please fill out and turn in visitor slips at the Connect Corner in the lobby and receive our new gift bag. Please update our prayer list by emailing your request to cfcprayerrequest1 at gmail.com or text 252-206-6969 and in person by simply filling out a prayer card and dropping it in the prayer box on the altar by minister seating. Please observe all handicapped reserved seating for those in need of special care and please no food or drink in the worship center. Bottled water only. Thank you so much. Please do not leave personal items or trash in seats. All unauthorized items left in the seats will be placed in the lost and found bin behind the welcome desk at the Connect Corner. Your cooperation is deeply appreciated. And remember, at the Connect Corner, monthly event calendars, church directories, sermon CDs can all be picked up there. You can register for home life groups and more. Plus, you can also receive our 24-ounce CFC Stadium Cups for a donation of just $2 at the Connect Corner as well as CSC decal stickers for a donation of just $1. Please continue to share all sermon series and freedom worship videos on Facebook, then comment, please share. Check us out online at cfcsandycross.com for all new features, including online giving. Finally, the all-new CFC app is ready for download. Please pick up a copy of instruction for both Android and Apple at the Connect Corner on your way out today. Now... Let's get ready to pray it in as we prepare for today's worship celebration. Let's make some noise for Jesus! Good morning, everybody! How many know He's alive? He is risen from the grave. We want to kickstart this service this morning and just go ahead and go all in. Anybody ready to go all in? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you ready over there? I'm going to ask you again. Are you ready over there? Are you ready? How many saved folk we got in here today? By the blood of the Lamb. I was blinded by the devil, born already ruined, stone cold dead as I stepped out of the womb. By his grace I have been touched, by his word I have been healed, by his hand I've been delivered, by his spirit I've been sealed, I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. So glad. I'm so glad. So glad. Somebody say so glad. So glad. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Lord. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Steve Collins, play me some Holy Ghost guitar. Oh. oh, yeah.
Garbage, play that piano! Thank you, Lord. Can I sing one more verse? Here we go. Nobody to rescue me. Nobody was there. I was going down for the last time. By his mercy, I've been spared. Yeah! Not power, by faith in him who called. For so long I've been in there. For so long I've been stopping. Now I'm saved. By the blood of the Lamb. Gracious Father, we just come before your presence, Lord. We come with thanksgiving, we come with praise. Most of all, we come with honor, oh God. God, we're so thankful, God, that we know there is an empty tomb, God. God, and that tomb was empty just for us, God. We thank you that you sent your son, you sacrificed him just for us, God. And God, now we know we're saved, God. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, God. We thank you, God, that you brought us into this place for such a time as this, God. We ask that you will move all over this place right now. Let your Shekinah glow fill this room, God. God, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. God, as we open our hearts up to you this morning, we ask that you will fill it until it overflows, God. God, we thank you that your presence permeate this place, God. Have your way in this building, God. Have your way in our lives, God. Help us not to leave this presence the same, God. 
but change us in your presence, God. Transform us, God, in your very presence, God. Meet every need in this house, God. God, we ask that you will make this atmosphere conducive to miracles, signs, and wonders, God. Anoint a fresh and a new freedom as they open their mouths to sing, God. We thank you for the man of God that's going to bring forth your word with dunamis power, God. As the fire falls, God, ah, consume everything that's not like you, God. Hey, God, that we were made minister to a lost and a dying word of your loving kindness, God, and of your tender mercy, God. And we say, do it for your glory, God. For it's in Jesus' matchless name that we pray, God. And the church said, Surely it was through Since when has impossible to ever stop you <laughs> Friday's disappointment Is Sunday's empty too when I possible ever stop Sing it with me This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. I hear you. This, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And it cost a fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again Cause this is the sound of dry bones rattling Oh, how many know we got a God who is able? My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah. If there's anything that He can't do, just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb. God, what happens when God says to move? I feel Him moving in now. I feel Him doing it now. I feel Him doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Both in the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Both in the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Both in the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. 
This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Don't you know he has done what he said he would do? He is not here, cause he has risen! I want you to command every dead thing in your life, every fading, fleeting thing in your life, to live by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Come on. shout live in this place here we go no matter what it is tell it to live and dry bones gonna live live, live. live. Dry, dry bones in the word of the lord live live, live. live. dry bones in the word of the lord thankful that the very same power that raised him from the grave is alive in me how many so thankful for that today I'm not here to celebrate religion today I'm not here to celebrate an annual tradition I'm not here to serve an appointed time that says we got to come. I'm here to celebrate what happened over 2,000 years ago that caused me to have a relationship with a risen Savior. Not a dead man, but a man who's very much alive. Amen. What he said I could have, I have in Jesus' name. Is that anybody else in this place? Here we go. You call me from the grave by the name. You call me out of all my shame. I see the old has passed away. The new has come. Now I have resurrection. Living on the inside, Jesus, you have given us freedom. No longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. I'm dressed in your robe. Yeah. 
tried to hold you down this morning. You're praising a resurrected king. So let him resurrect you this morning. Can you do that? Come on, let's celebrate with some praise this morning. Hands lifted all over this room. Oh. Our King is alive. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory. The Savior knelt to wash our feet. Now at His feet we bow. At His feet we bow. Sing the one who wore. Resurrecting me in 
your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed the rain. The resurrected 
in every spot thank you God that the stone was rolled away it's evidence God that we can see thank you Jesus how many are so glad that we are going to live with the king of kings forever come on shout forever We serve a risen God. 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 We serve a
risen Savior. Come on. Bring them in this room, come on! Thank you, Lord. 
is glorified forever he is lifted high forever he is risen he is alive he is alive sing it with all you got right here come on Glorify. Ah, come on and worship him. Worship him. Stay right there. He called on Abosha. Ah, stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. He called on Abosha. his name. Oh, we not in a hair. Do what you do, Lord. Oh, we've been asking for more. We've been asking for more. We've been asking for more. He's here. He's here. Forever, he's glorified. <laughs> Forever, he's lifted high. Come on, talk to me. Ah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He caught a labosha. I dare you to move the stone. I dare you to move the stone. I dare you to move the stone. Come on, talk to me. Ah, Will anybody move the stone? Ah. See, if you move the stone up your heart, he will come in. Ah. Ah. I said, if you move the stone, he will come in. For too long, church. Because of our hurt and because of our pain, we, we continue to put the stone over our heart. We won't give him access to our hearts. He wants our heart. But in order for him to get our heart, we gotta move the stone. For the word of the Lord declared when he got to Lazarus' grave. He declared that I am the resurrection. But the Lord gave them specific instructions. He told them to move the stone. Good God. Huh. 
I had to move the stone away. Uh, to give him access to my heart. Uh, there's a place of brokenness in the Lord that God is calling us to. And if we will just move the stone away, uh, he'll come in. Who will come in? The King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. <laughs> Open up the gates. Open up the floodgates. Hallelujah. Come on, ushers. Atmosphere of worship. Stay right there in the atmosphere of worship. Thank you, Lord. We're going to ask Brother Neil if you will pray over the offering. Ah. also can give on our Share Faith app. I download instructions on Apple and Android and on our website and on our Facebook page. And if you would like, you can give the old-fashioned way. You can mail in your donations to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South NC Highway 58, Elm City, North Carolina, 27822. Again, we'd just like to thank you for your faithfulness during this difficult time. You may give at this time. Hallelujah. Uh, don't stop praising him.
grateful that you came to be with us on this morning, that you came to lift up the name of Jesus. How many are ready for the word? <laughs> Good God, oh I know y'all ready for the word. Uh, awesome job, freedom. Awesome job. Awesome job. They took us before him, before the king. Huh. Now we're going to get fed the bread of life. Are you ready for the bread of life? Hallelujah. For the Bible declares man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And that's what we want more than anything. We want to know what God is saying to the church in this hour. Come on, stretch your hands towards the man of God. Say, man of God. Man of God. Preach, the word Preach the word with fire. With fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. We could go home right now, but I, I believe the word is important. Amen. I'm not going to go too long since we had an hour of praise and worship, but uh, I know you're uh, appreciating sitting down right now a little bit more than maybe usual. But uh, I, I love a church that obeys God. I love to worship the Lord. And I love for the freedom of Jesus Christ to saturate and just spread in a room. Amen. Because we didn't come to have a concert. We came to have an experience. Amen. And I'm so thankful that you're here. Of all the churches you could have gone to today, you chose to come to Christian Fellowship Church. And if you're new today and you're visiting today, we welcome you and we thank you uh, for being here. We are all about him. And if we're all about him, we're all about you, because he's all about you. And we love you. We want you to feel welcome. Uh, we ask that uh, if you are visiting today, fill out that visitor slip. And if you didn't get one, just get one after church. Turn it in at the Connect Corner, and they will give you a free gift for coming today. Also, if you have your cell phone with you, go ahead and get it out. We need people to be seeing online what's going on here. We want to reach as many people as we can today. So let's go to the CFC page, CFC Sandy Cross on Facebook. When you click on that, just go to this live stream right now and simply click share. We're believing, we've been believing for 50 plus and we've been getting that already. Let's believe for 100. Let's believe for 150 today. You say, why, why, why? Because the more People that share, the more views we have. The more views we have, the more people are reached with something good on big tech, something good on social media for a change. How many know that we can turn things around? Amen? Come on, the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Amen? Come on, we could take it and use it for the gospel this morning. Hallelujah. So I want to remind everybody that services are always available. Online with Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Wednesday and 10 a.m. Sunday. Then on YouTube by 8 p.m. Wednesday and 12 p.m. Sunday. And again, please share. I want to thank everybody that participated in our, key, our kids' Easter egg hunt yesterday. It was a great turnout. And I want to thank all the children's leaders. Joy and her team did a fantastic job. And we're so thankful. Not only did they just, not only did they go find Easter eggs, they heard the gospel in a way that they could understand it. And I am appreciative of that, all right? This Friday is our big youth fundraiser golf tournament. Thank you for everybody that's gotten involved, uh, made donations, sold sponsorships, collected prizes. Uh, this is going to be fantastic. Pre please pray that the weather holds up so we can play this thing and be done. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And then we can get our playground for our kids. Hallelujah. <laughs> and our basketball court. Amen. Come on, somebody. Sonic can have all that and all these other. So can the house of God. Amen. We want to bless our children, and we're so thankful for everybody. Man, the prizes that we're giving away makes it so good on the golfers, and I'm just so thankful. Be praying for the team of volunteers that's helping my wife that day as well. And uh, who knows? I, I would just love for a CFC golfer to bring home the first place trophy this year. Amen. But either way, and... Maybe one that stands right here, uh, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. But we're going to have a good time, and I just I thank you so much. Uh, we, we have to turn in all of our T-signs by Monday, so let's go ahead and get those sponsors in as well as the donated prizes by this uh, Wednesday because there will be 
uh, getting all that together Wednesday night, going over there to take everything Thursday, and then they will uh, we'll have the tournament uh, Friday. Ladies, men's, and senior fellowship resumes this month. So the ladies will do something next week. We'll have more uh, information about that uh, on Wednesday than, than the men, than the, the seniors. Home life groups resume in May. They couldn't resume tonight because it's Easter, and we want you to enjoy your family time today. I know I am. Amen. We're going to eat good today. Hallelujah. Um, and then here, this is something new, spontaneous, fell into my lap, and it was easy. It wasn't hard. It wasn't complicated. That's when I know it's a God thing. Come on. Amen. So we're going to have something called the outpouring. It's a summer revival with national speaker William Pollock. June 27th through the 30th, amen, it's going to be something you really need to get. This is not replacing our empowerment conference. We're still going to have an empowerment conference in September. The lineup is already booked. But God laid it on my heart that we needed some supernatural stuff going on around here, and we need to get ready to take our faith to a new level. Amen. Are you ready in this place this morning? Hallelujah. God bless you, and thank you again for being here. Amen. At this time, our King's kids are going to be dismissed. Who do we have to thank? Them? Are we having discipleship tonight since it's Easter? No, I didn't think so. Would it be an Easter? I didn't think so. Amen. Yes, we want everybody, myself, all, Chris, and all the leaders, we want you to enjoy your family time. Amen. Thank you, Melinda. We didn't get a chance to thank her. Thank you, Melinda. Amen, amen, amen. All right, as they get ready there, let's turn to the Gospel of John chapter 19. Who loves the Word of God? Amen. John chapter 19. Who's going to give me a little time to preach? How many know the Word is important? Worship gets things going for the Word. But you know what I'm finding also? prayer before worship. When I got here this morning a little before 8 a.m., there was a prayer team already in the floor praying for this service today. We have these kinds of um, results, I believe, because we go ahead and welcome God before the congregation even gets here. Amen? So there's a residue in this place. And we need, we need that. We need these seats to be covered with prayer. We need this altar and this platform to be covered with prayer. We need these instruments and these microphones and that wonderful soundboard to be covered in prayer. Amen? Because we want God to have his way in this place. Now, you may say, are you breaking away from the series today? No, we're going to still be in this series. And we've been in a series called Triggers. Amen? And this series has shown us what the triggers in life can be. From situational fallouts to incidents and even mistakes as well as choices. The positions we take to especially people themselves. Also, negatively speaking, jealousy can be a trigger. But most of all, on a positive note, our faith. Somebody say my faith. Your faith ought to be a trigger. Amen? Amen? If we're going to have faith, then the Bible says that God has given us all a measure of faith. I want to do something with it. I want to access heaven. Away with the, the contemplation and the thinking from Christians that I've got to struggle and endure all the way into glory. Now, I know the Bible tells me that he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Yes, we do endure things. But how many know we're protected? How many know that we're covered? How many know that we have joy unspeakable? How many know that we have access to the throne? Amen? There were people a while ago that were feeling the remnant of a throne room. Amen? And that might sound far-fetched or weird to some people, but I am here to tell you, we can access heaven from earth. I don't serve a faraway God that went away and said, I'll see you one day. 
No, he's here. He's risen. He said, I have been with you. Now I shall be in you. Amen? Amen. All right. With that said, we want our faith to access heaven and pull the spiritual trigger on covenant blessings. Meaning blessings that I have and that I get simply from being in covenant with God. Amen? Don't hate on me if I'm getting blessed. Hallelujah. I can't help it. I'm in covenant. I'm in covenant with God. I want to access blessings that way. And while at the same time working what may seem, God can work those things that are against us for our good. Those things that are against, instead of fearing them, instead of saying, why God, why? Why don't we just start praising God like the Bible says and count it all joy? God, you're going to teach me something in this. God, you're going to use this as a trigger to propel me forward. Amen? Because all things work for the good of those who love the Lord. Amen? Even what comes against me can work in my favor. Too many people get bogged down with the things that are against them and they start to have a pity party and say, I never get a break. Why is this always happening to me? But I serve a God that can cause you to see it another way. He could cause you to have a whole new perspective and start seeing that thing that's against you as a trigger to propel you and push you forward towards your destiny. I need a Christian and a believer to get happy about that truth this morning. Today on this Easter Sunday, we'll look at the ultimate trigger Jesus himself pulled as we continue this series called triggers before I pray can we welcome back from quarantining another one of our blessed seniors Francine Etzel you know where's Mima welcome back Mima amen we're glad to have him in the house hallelujah also our long distance member online our beach bum right there Don Barham Watches every week. Loves her church. Hallelujah. She lives in a beautiful place. Amen. We're so glad to have Dawn here today as well. We love you. Father, we just thank you right now for your word. We thank you for this time of praise and worship. We thank you for this gathering today, God. For we know that the enemy has fought against your people in order to gather. But God, we know that this thing is lifting. And your people are coming together. We're forsaking not to assemble together. Even as your return draweth nigh. God, we are glad to be here today on Resurrection Sunday. Lord, we thank you, God, that you rose again and that you're here with us now. Let every Christian heart in this place say amen. Say amen. Now give him a praise because he's so worthy. Amen. I want to, as you're holding your place there at John 19, I want to review real quick where we were at last week, if I can, because I kind of want to build this thing up. Is that all right? Now, last Sunday, we reviewed the following scripture concerning Jesus' climactic, groundbreaking miracle, which was the raising from the dead of his dear friend Lazarus, which would trigger into motion the plot of the religious leaders for Jesus to die, right? So at this point... Jesus has said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says that he who was dead came out of the tomb alive, wrapped up in his grave clothes. Jesus said, loose him, let him go. Right? Then it says, then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen Mary and Martha and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in him, but some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, what shall we do for this man works many signs? If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him and the Romans will come away and take our place away and our nation. Then one of them, Caiaphas, being the high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient, meaning it might be wrong, but it's convenient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. Okay? 
This was said. God caused a man that wanted to stop his will to speak his will. Isn't that just like God? To use anyone, even someone that is against the movement, to spark the movement. Amen? It just goes to show you, when it's of God, can't nothing stop it. Can't no man, can't, can't come on, heaven, and, come on, hell cannot stop it. Nothing can stop a movement of God. And God relied on Caiaphas and the Pharisees' hatred, pride, so much that he knew, he knew that they would want to kill a movement. Don't ever let your religion blind you so much that God can count on you to kill a movement. I'm not talking about a non-believer. I'm talking about a covenant Jew. Amen? And God wants to spark a revival in America. How many know that we're on the verge, I believe, of the greatest turnaround, the greatest reversal in the history of our land. I heard it said recently, and I, I love this. Israel didn't choose God. God chose Israel. You know why I know that America has a covenant with God and God loves America? Because God didn't choose America, but America chose God. America chose to take our Constitution and our Bill of Rights and base it off the Word of God. Amen? And that's why the devil is fighting so hard to make wrong called right and right called wrong and legalize things that are an abomination unto God. But if the people of God will rise up in this day, if my people who are called by my name, Come on, if we'll cry out. Is this just regular preaching to some of you in this room? I'm here to tell you revival is on the way. Revival is going to wreck your religion. Revival's about to wreck your tradition. Revival is about to spoil your gravy and your grits. Amen. Revival is on the way. Revival is getting ready to shake you. You've never danced before, but you're about to start dancing. You've never ever wanted to lift your hands but you're about to start lifting your hands you ain't never laid hands on folks and prayed in Jesus name before but the Holy Ghost is about to give you a boldness like you've never known before because revival is here does anybody want revival in the land <laughs> hallelujah now with this said I'm going to try to behave hallelujah he did not say it on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. Now, again, this was a trigger that set things in fast motion for Jesus' destiny on the cross. It would not be long now that he'd be handed over for Rome to execute. But we know that Pontius Pilate would wash his hands of it, right? And Caiaphas would speak up. Caiaphas was the high priest, only the high priest could offer the sacrificial sin each year for the people. Right? So Jesus wasn't executed like the thief on the right and the left. He was offered up. Amen? Pilate ordered the execution of the thief on the right and the left. He didn't order it for Jesus. He let Caiaphas order it in order to keep peace. My focus point for John 19 that you've been holding for a minute is this. My first focus point. Claiming what you don't even believe in order to get what you want. How sad it is for someone to align themselves with something or someone that they don't even agree with in order to get what they want. I hope some pastors are listening to this. I hope some legislators are listening to this. Claiming what you don't even believe in order to get what you want. Look at this. Now, fast forward through Holy Week, which we just went through. The turning over of the tables. The declaring to the people that before Abraham was, Jesus said, I am. The Last Supper. 
the praying in the garden, being handed over for, to Herod, being handed over to Caiaphas, had a mock trial in the middle of the night, taken to Pilate, beaten, and that wasn't good enough. Having his skin stripped from his back, having a mock crown of thorns embedded in his head, cutting the blood vessels, bleeding out on the Via Della Rosa. He spaced Pilate at this point who has found him innocent. But Pilate washed his hands of it and let the Jewish leaders amongst the crowd make the final decision. And it says in verse 15 of John 19, are you there? But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? Because Jesus told them. They told Pilate, Jesus claimed to be a king. And Jesus said in layman's terms to Pilate privately, you know, you don't even realize what kind of king I am. So Pilate's maybe having a little fun here. Shall I crucify your king? L listen what the chief priests answered. We have no king but Caesar. These are covenant Jews. These are the people of God proclaiming that a pagan, non-believer, is their king. They've never done this before. They've never shown this kind of allegiance to Rome. They didn't want to be occupied by Rome. They wanted Israel to be free. They didn't want to be conquered by Rome. They wanted Israel to live in freedom. Yet in order to get what they wanted, they claimed something that they didn't even believe. How sad is it when a Christian will align themselves with things that are anti-Christ, anti, come on, anti-Bible in order for their agenda to be met. Am I talking right in this place? You cannot align yourself with things that are not of God if you're a man or woman of God. You have to be careful what you listen to. You have to be careful what sources you trust. There are lies and confusion everywhere around you. There are people who will claim to have your best interest at heart, but you have got to check the spirit and know. And they may be good and they're not evil, but they've been lied to. They've been taken advantage. They've been used. They've been confused. And they're blinded to what is really good. Amen, come on. You have to stand up and have the freedom to have your own voice based off the word of God. He said, we have no king. This is the high priest now. We have no king but Caesar. What about Jehovah? Okay, you don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. You don't believe that the carpenter's son is the Messiah. What about Jehovah? He never says anything about God. He pledges his allegiance to a politician only. Man cannot save you. Verse 16 says, Then Pilate delivered him to them, to the priests, to the religious leaders to be crucified. And they took Jesus, led him away, and he bearing his cross went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Amen. Keep Jesus in the center. Amen. Now, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was this, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Those were the three mainstream languages of that time. It was written in every language that people could understand so that all people could see, amen, that a king was on a cross. Come on, somebody. Everybody that walked by, no matter what language they spoke, they could see there's a king there. Amen? And what did that uh, prophesy? It prophesied that Jesus is not just the king of the Jews, but he's the king of everybody. Come on, somebody. 
He's the Lord of all. Now, it says on verse 20, excuse me, verse 21, therefore the chief priests of the Jews, they didn't like that now. Chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Caiaphas said, do not write the king of the Jews. But instead write that he said, he claimed he was the king of the Jews, right? And Pilate said this, I like this. Even though he's a non-believer, watch this. He said, what I have written, I have written. I ain't changing it for you. Now, was Pilate mocking Jesus? Or was he at the same time or even only just flexing his authority to Caiaphas? Because he didn't want Jesus to be crucified. Pilate was being fair. He saw that Jesus had committed no crime. But he had to give Caiaphas what? They wanted because he could not have riots. He could not have things stirred up. He did not want Caesar to send people down there. See, Pilate was the governor of that area. Caesar was over him. He had to keep things nice and quiet. But I don't think he liked it. I don't think he liked having to let Caiaphas make a decision. But he did. And he could have been mocking him. I don't know. But he at the same time was letting Caiaphas know. I'm still in charge. Now, just as God calls Caiaphas to prophesy that Jesus would die for the people, perhaps he also calls Pontius Pilate to write king of the Jews. Yet the church leaders still wanted to kill Jesus. Even a pagan found him innocent. Even a non-believer saw in the eyes of Jesus that he was clear that he was not guilty. And even on a sign it said he's a king. But they couldn't see it. They couldn't see that their promised Messiah. That they had destroyed his body. Can I give you shouting point number one this morning? Stubborn pride won't allow you to see the good things you've destroyed in your life. Despite how clearly visible they may be. Until you submit, until you say, God, forgive me, until you say, God, show me anything that I've missed. Show me anything that I've left unsurrendered. Good God. Show me anything I've not confessed. God, show me anything I've not made right. And if I missed it, God, show me because I don't want to miss it because I don't want to destroy any good thing in my life due to pride. You say, well, we're a church full of saints. We're a church full of Christians. We're a church full of believers. You don't have to tell me that. Can I tell you, Christians suffer from pride just as bad, if not worse, than non-believers. Come on, somebody. Amen? Don't think you're so saved and you're so religious and you're so churchy. Oh, this ain't no way to talk to new folks in the crowd. Then, oh, I just got to tell you like it is. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why God put me here. Amen. Hallelujah. You have got to realize there is pride in your life. And the moment you think there's nothing you need to change and there's nothing you need to do, that's the moment you need to do something. Whether you sit in the pew, whether you play on the stage, whether you stand behind the pulpit and preach. Amen. We all have to realize that pride can invade our lives and cause us to be blind to the things that we've destroyed. I don't want to destroy anything good in my life. Listen, you say, well, we would never do anything at this level. These folks were the church. They thought they were doing right. They were so used to having church. They were so used to having traditions that they didn't even see the Messiah come. Lord God, don't let me get so stuck in tradition that I can't see when a wave of glory is being sent in the house. Don't let me hold the pew of tradition and religion and not even realize that the Holy Spirit is in the room. God, when you're speaking to me, I want to hear you clearly. God, when you want to relinquish something in my life that I have yet to surrender to you, I want to submit to you. Amen? This is unpopular preaching because the mainstream preaching today 
is happy-go-lucky. And we don't ever talk about sin. And we don't ever talk about surrender. Come on, somebody. But we've got to realize, amen, that we still need voices crying out in the wilderness that says, make way for the Lord. Repent, repent, repent. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Amen. Stubborn pride won't allow you to see the good thing you've destroyed in your life. Despite how plainly visible they may be. My next point of focus is this. When you realize that the ending of one thing has triggered the incredible beginning of another. A lot of times in order for something new and great and incredible and powerful and influential to get off the ground something else great has to come to an end but many times the torch is passed many times what starts up in the new movement takes the momentum from the old one and doesn't desecrate it doesn't ignore it doesn't say that nothing great ever happened there but Jesus himself even told the disciples, greater works will you do than I did. And he raised up dead people. Every time one ministry ends or comes to an end or retirement takes place, the next one's supposed to grab that torch and take it higher. We ought to want our children to climb higher than we did. Amen? So when you realize that the ending of one thing has triggered the incredible beginning of another, Jesus is crucified at this time. You can cut the tension with a knife. Everybody that followed him is about to have a nervous breakdown. They were so happy. For three years, they had toured the regions. They had seen blinded eyes open. They had seen the dead raised. They had seen the deaf made able to hear. They had seen the lame able to walk and they heard the parables and the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. They heard the greatest teachings of all time. And yet, in their flesh, they're starting to have doubts. They've all dispersed. They've all scattered. Was it just? Was it true? Was he for real? They killed him. He's dead. We're wanted because we were with him. All of a sudden, what was so popular is now not popular. When it felt so good to be seen with Jesus and to be associated with Jesus... But in a matter of days, it became unpopular. It became illegal. Amen? And they wanted to cancel everybody that had anything to do with them. Cancel culture existed back then. It was right, and it was popular, and it was in style, and it was a fad, and it was fashionable to follow Jesus. And now... It was not. Sometimes the stand you take for righteousness won't be popular. It won't. Come on. But you still got to stand for what's right. Even if everybody loses their mind around you. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm still going to stand for what's right. I'm still going to say his name is Jesus. I'm not going to be politically correct. And just say, God, this and God, that. Yes, God is my Father, but Jesus, the Son of God, is my Lord and Savior. Amen. You cannot separate them. Because I'm here to tell you, Muslims call Allah God. Buddhists call Buddha God. Atheists don't have a God, but they had their holiday the first of this month. They've already had their holiday, Stokes. I mean, do y'all know any atheists? Then on April uh, 1st, you should have said, happy holiday. <laughs> happy politically correct holiday to you. 
Why do you say that, Daniel? That's mean. No, the Bible says it's a fool who says there is no God. Foolish. Foolish. Come on. What about the Big Bang Theory? Come on. That's a TV show. It ain't. Co- <laughs> you better know the hand of God did all this. Amen. Amen. <laughs> when you realize the ending of one thing has triggered the beginning of another. So we go from the cross to the bar tomb. Why was it a bar tomb? Because Jesus knew he only needed it for a few days. Come on. If I just need a car for three days, I'm not going to finance it for seven years or six years or five years. If I just need a house for three days, I'm not going to finance that thing for 30 years. Can I borrow borrow it for three days? I promise you, you'll get it back. And of all the people who gave it to him, it was a Pharisee. He was reaching some of them, Pastor Tim. He reached one named Nicodemus. And he had reached one named Joseph of Arimathea who said, you can bury him in my tomb that I've paid for. That's big right there. People buy plots for their bodies to be buried in one day. It's, one, it's something to give it away to someone that everybody that's with you wanted to kill. That was looked at as a phony. That was looked at as a liar. That was looked at as a maniac. That was looked at as a criminal. But something inside of him said, I've got to give this to him. God can reach the heart of anybody. Good God. Watch this. Watch. Can I go ahead? Matthew 28, verse 1. Watch this. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, another Mary, not Mary, the uh, mother of Jesus, came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men, meaning both of them fainted. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here He's already out. For he is ridden, risen, and as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. He's already out ahead of you. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. I've got to tell you something this morning. Notice how when the earthquake happens and the angel comes down, The guards fainted then, but Jesus is already gone. So if Jesus would have caused him to faint, would it have taken an earthquake to get Jesus out of that tomb and caused him to faint? Wouldn't they have already been fainted when the ladies got there? You see, he didn't need the stone to be removed in order to get out. He didn't have to have the stone removed so that he could get out. The stone was not removed so he could get out. The stone was removed so they could get in. The guards didn't even see him leave. That means the stone didn't roll away. What happened then? The stone was rolled away so there would be witnesses to the fact that he won't in there. He must have walked right through that stone. Or he walked through some part of it. He walked out of it. What does that tell me? Good God Almighty. If he's alive in me, I don't have to have the heavy things that hold me back necessarily move out of the way in order for me to come out of them. Amen. Listen, it's just like the veil. The veil, the veil was not... Uh, torn so that God could reach us the veil was torn so that we could reach him it was torn from the top to the bottom never confuse that had it been torn from the bottom to the top man could have done it but it was torn at the moment Jesus said it is finished amen nobody could have climbed up to the top that quick and done it 
God did it. God did it because he wants you to be able to reach him. Quit thinking you serve a faraway God. He is risen. He is in, come on, Jesus lives in me. I don't have to have the heavy things that I face be taken out of the way before I can start rejoicing. Before I can start living. Before I can start moving forward. This thing is in front of me. But I'm still going to have the joy of the Lord. This thing is still, I'm still facing this thing. Amen. You mean to tell me I got to wait until it moves to praise my God? No. I will praise God right now. Amen. And it's as I praise Him, I walk through what has to be removed for other people. Other people won't start living until it's removed. What if it takes a year? What if it takes five years? I'm going to live. I'm going to prosper. I'm going to thrive despite it. Amen? Verse 8, so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Oh, the level of faith this must have given them all. The very core of our faith now. You see, had Jesus only died on the cross and not resurrected to be seen by eyewitnesses, he'd have been chalked up as just a martyr. But he's not. He's the son of man and the son of God. Therefore, give me shouting point number two. Watch this. He was man enough to willingly lay down on a cross, but God enough to powerfully rise up out of the grave. Amen. My Jesus did both. My Jesus was not scared. He did not tap out. His nerves got a little tore up when he was praying. He had flesh on. Anybody in here? Sometimes you can get nervous, especially if you were facing what he was facing the next day. My Jesus was tough. And he laid his life down so that I could go free. And then he powerfully came up out of that tomb without the stone even having to roll away. Good God Almighty, y'all. Who wouldn't want to serve a Savior like that? Muhammad didn't do that. Buddha didn't do that. Come on, somebody. But Jesus did. This is my last focus point. Anybody getting anything out of this this morning? I'm done in five minutes. Watch this. Focus point. The solidifying solidarity of Christianity. Why did I say that? It sums, this sums it all up for me, and it's why... Christianity is so solid. There's a lot of fragile beliefs out there. It is. There's some that acknowledge Jesus Christ for who he is, but their, their confused doctrine is wrong. Jehovah Witnesses believe in Jesus, but their doctrine is wrong. But they can be very convincing to people who don't know no better. Because they will knock on 55 doors in one day for what they believe. No matter how many people slam the door in their face, they are um, persistent. Mormons believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but they have a wrong doctrine. Right? Right? The solidifying solidarity of Christianity is this. 1 Peter 1, 3. Talks about a heavenly inheritance. Verse 3 says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, has made us born again, in other words, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He points out resurrection being the basis of our living hope. Not a hope so, oh, he died, I hope he comes back. No, they know he came back because they saw him. 
They talked to him. Peter even asked him to forgive him. He told him how much he loved him. You see, God did more than sacrifice his son for our sin. He resurrected him for our hope. This is my last shouting point and I'm done. My deep gratitude is because he died, but my confirmed hope is because he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Because he lives. Oh, I love that old song. I can face tomorrow. No matter what comes, let come what may, I can face it because my risen Savior is alive. Eh? My God's not dead. I'm going to sing all the songs. He's surely alive. Amen? He lives on the inside of every believer in this place. And I have a deep gratitude for the fact that he died. But my confirmed hope is because he lives. I'm here to say this right now. Families, today is the greatest holiday of remembrance we can have. It's not Christmas. It's not Thanksgiving. I'm glad a child was born. Amen. But come on, he grew up to be a 33-year-old man who laid down his life for you and I. And three days after that, he rose again. This is it right here. And for everybody online, and anybody in this nation, anybody in this community, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, every day is Easter. Every day. Live Easter Sunday every day. He is risen. We commemorate it today, but we got to live it every single day. Jesus' crucifixion triggered a way for our salvation to be paid for while his resurrection triggered our eternal hope in him. We have a firm foundation for our hope in eternal life because Jesus rose again and lives even now. He's more than a leader, more than a prophet, more than a martyr. He's the son of God. What a trigger that is for the world. When you say his name, you will get a reaction somewhere. When you say the name of Jesus somewhere, you're either going to get an amen, all right now, or you're going to get a, oh, Lord, one of them. Jesus' name is going to get heavier and heavier in the time we're living in now. Why do you say that? Because they were praying in the house of Congress in Jesus' name. Now with the new Congress... They have recently said God's will does not matter to this Congress. What do you say to that? I say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, woe unto you. You look at how people are treated when they, in the secular realm when they stand up for Jesus. Look at how Tim Tebow was treated. Look, come on, look at how Kanye West was treated. You say, well, he's kind of out there a little bit. He still was proclaiming the name of Jesus. I'll take it. What's the other girl's name? Uh, it starts with a D. I don't know. She proclaimed Jesus. They're trying to ban her now. His name still triggers something in folks. Does it trigger anything in you? Have you heard his name so many times it don't matter no more? Good God Almighty, you better get in the altar. His name is still the name above all names. His name, amen, the mention of his name brings praise and worship into an atmosphere. The name, his name, oh come on somebody, demons tremble at the sound of his name. That's why his name is fought against so much. Because demons tremble at the sound of his name. Amen. What a trigger that is for the world. What a trigger it is for other religions. Had somebody asked me one time, when you sing that song, Our God is Greater, you're saying that, that's kind of an offense to other religions. I said, yeah. It's kind of the idea. We believe our God is greater.
I don't go around saying, my God's greater than yours. My God's greater than yours. No, no. My God is real. Their gods are not even real. There is no God but Jehovah. There is no Messiah but Jesus. There's no other name under heaven in which man can even be saved than that of the name of Jesus. Oh my God, my God. And guess what? His name ought to be a trigger for you. His name ought to be a trigger for you. As I close this morning, the incredible spiritual trigger that the resurrection of Jesus was then and still is today should trigger every believer in this time we are in right now to live a newly resurrected life. I beg you with everything I've got in me. I'll even get down on one knee. He got down and washed people's feet. Laid my life down as a servant of Jesus Christ. I urge everybody in this room, everybody watching online, let the tradition of man end today and stop going through the motions and assemble yourselves with people who believe what you believe and gain a relationship ignite your prayer life again open up your bible again get praise and worship music in your ears again tune in to the truth and tune out the lies when it's too heavy pray when you don't have the words ask god to give you the words when you don't want to come to church do everything you can to get there when you don't want to read your Bible, do everything you can to open it up. Give it five minutes, ten minutes at least. I promise you, God will speak to your heart. Let religion end in your life of the way you think it's supposed to look and that's supposed to look. We're in the end times now, closer than ever before. Relinquish every area of your life surrender every part of your life that you have refused to give up you say how do I know I need to give it up if it bothers you if it convicts you amen then it's a problem for you when it convicts you the Holy Spirit is speaking to you so many folks don't think they can hear from God yes you do God can speak directly to your heart. God can use your own conscience to shake you. Amen? Don't let this day just be about, can I go ahead? Don't let this day be about the new outfit. Don't let this day be about 40,000 Easter eggs. That's good for the children. That's good for the children. Children are going to be children. I'm not one of those religious zealots that wants to ban Santa Claus. That's, that's fun for little children. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child, a reason like a child. But when I became older, I got rid of my childish ways. Amen. Nothing wrong with that stuff. We have Santa Claus here. Nothing wrong with Easter egg bunny or whatever he is. Bunnies, Easter egg bunny. Can a, can a bunny hatch an egg, Brother Jerry? I don't know. Maybe a Sandy Cross rabbit can do it, huh? Here's the thing, though. You make sure they know this. And the kids that came here, you, yes, they knew this. Easter's about Jesus. Christmas is about Jesus. Amen? To all you adults in this room right now, I want to urge you, live your best life now by starting your new life today. Easter got you to church today. Come on, be honest. It's Easter. We're going to church today. But let this day be the first day of your new life. God's doing something different in the land. And we're in a valley right now as a nation. So what do we do in that valley? We have a valley revival. And we get back to the things of God. Amen. 
And I guarantee you and I promise you, as long as you come to this church, I'm going to preach the truth. I'm going to call out wrong. I'm going to promote right. I'm going to obey God. Amen. I want God to trigger my life in such a way, amen, that he triggers me to empower people for his glory. Amen. I don't need him to trigger me to perform. I need him to trigger me to empower you. Did anybody get anything out of this today? Stand to your feet and give him a praise in this place. Come on. Every head bowed and every eye closed. This won't take long, but what I'm about to do is so vitally important. It means so much. So I'm going to give the room just a few seconds to get themselves straightened out here so that it's not interrupted. All right, are we good? Are we ready to be about the lost that don't know Jesus Christ? How many people in this room right now know that you play a critical part in that? Will you raise your hand if you're saved and on your way to heaven this morning? Okay, you're the ones I'm counting on to pray for those who are not, okay? So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I need every saint in here to pray your own way. Let God give you the words to say. But I want you to pray right now for God to work the greatest miracle that could happen in this place right now. And that is for a lost soul to give their heart to Jesus. Can I get every Christian in here? I need you to pray. Pray with fire. Pray with enthusiasm. Come on, somebody. Rebuke the yawning. Don't give God your yawning pray. Amen? I want you to pray right now that if there be any among us that is lost in this place, and those watching online, if you're lost and undone, do not play with God today. When you put it in all caps and say, I want to be saved, really mean it. Really mean it, and we'll baptize you Wednesday. Amen? With every head bowed and every eye closed on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, who would raise their hand and say, I need Jesus. I don't know how to do this. You may have all these thoughts saying, well, i got to be perfect. i got to do this. i got to do that. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will begin to perfect your life and begin to perfect your mind. If there's any Christian in here that wants to lay down an unsurrendered area, come on and lay it down right now. Lay it down in prayer. If it's in your pocket, lay it down. I don't care if it's a crack pipe, a heroin needle. I don't care what it is. If it's a problem for you, if it's affecting your mind, if it's affecting your health, lay it down. If it's in the car, the ushers will let you go out and get it. And you can bring it and lay it right down here on this altar. Daniel, what are you doing? I want people to get free. We don't need to just sing about it and shout about it. Come on, let's see it. Let's see it. I'm tired of families hurting over these things. I'm tired of there being a greater belief in a bondage than a greater belief in the bondage breaker. And he is here. He is risen. Is there anybody here today on either side of this altar that wants to lay some things down for God? Don't hold on to it. Don't be afraid to fail. Show God you need his help. Lay it down on this altar. Is there anybody in here lost and undone and you could leave this place today, fall asleep in your chair today and never wake up, drive home and not make it? home would you be in the eternal presence of Jesus now we've had people raise their hands to say they are saved with every head bowed and every eye closed who will admit today I'm not saved I'm not saved preacher I'm nervous I don't know what to do but I know I'm not saved anybody don't play with eternity I thought I could play with eternity. I thought that I could piggyback my family's salvation. And that because I was in church, that was good enough. 
It is always wonderful to be in the house of the Lord and to open yourself up. But when we get to heaven, when we stand before judgment day, it won't be about church attendance. It won't be about what we attended. It'll be about what we believed. It'll be about what we committed to. It'll be about what we received. It'll be, be about what we spoke up and said we wanted. Is there anybody in this place today? I know it's, it's tough. This is Easter. I know it's tough. But God can give you the boldness right now to not care what nobody thinks. Is there anybody among us that'll come take my hand? Father, I come to you right now. I pray the spirit of conviction on the lost. I pray the spirit of relinquishment and surrender to those who believe but could be holding back and have not given their whole heart to you. God, let them realize today they can overcome because you overcame. Let them realize that today. That it's not too late. We're going to sing a line in this song and then we're going to dismiss. At any time as we sing, you can get out of your seat and you can come here and we will have a rejoicing party for you along with heaven. I want to sing about overcoming this morning. Because you overcame. Sing Savior, worthy of honor. Savior, worthy of honor and glory. Worthy of all I pray. You overcame. Yes, you did. Oh, Jesus, awesome and powerful forever. Awesome and great is your name. Because you overcame. And we will overcome. And we will overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome, and we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone. Overcome. Come on, don't fight it. Get out of your seat right now. And we will overcome. Surrender. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone will overcome. Lay it down, sister. Come on. And we will overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone will overcome. Sing, Savior, Savior, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all I pray. Overcame, you overcame, so can I, Lord Jesus, awesome and powerful forever, awesome and great is your name, cause you overcame, one more time sing Savior, come on, Savior. Worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all I praise. You overcame, you overcame, Lord Jesus, 
Awesome and powerful forever. Awesome and great is your name. You overcame. How many overcomers we got out there this morning? God, I pray the prayer she's praying. God, I pray the prayer he's praying. And God, I pray for those among us that didn't come and those online that may have not come in. But we're believing that seeds have been sown. And I believe this message reached more people than possibly you think. And I believe because of that, people are going to hang up religion tradition, time limits on God, and they're going to grab a hold of a real, tangible, life-changing relationship. And that's what I want, because that's what changes lives. Amen? Come on and give him a praise. Pastor Jerry, would you come and pray us out this morning? Come on, let's thank God for Jerry Brazil this morning. that wonderful message Pastor Daniels preached this morning and the authority that you spoke with today. We know you have authority every time but there was extra anointing and I could feel the authority going out in great measures this morning. You know I had someone ask me one time how do you know that Jesus is real you've never seen him? I said I've never seen my heart but I know I got one. I can feel it beating. Amen. I know he's alive because the word of God says he's alive. He said, I'm he that was dead, but now I'm alive, and I'm alive forevermore. I know when he went in and the devil went out. Thank God, and I'm feeling him right now, Jesus, on the inside. Thank you for your presence here this morning. God thanks you. Pastor Daniel, Pastor Tim, thank you. And I thank you. May God bless you and meet every need. We want to thank God this morning, Brother Paul and his wife back this morning too. They've been out by a good while. So we're glad that God was able to bring them back. Father, we're so grateful for every prayer you've already answered. For the prayer that you are going to answer, dear God. Thank you for always fulfilling our need. Loving us with all of our faults and our failures. And God, we know even though we fail you, you've never failed us. Now I ask your blessing to be upon every home, oh God. Let this message be stored up in our spiritual library. Let us always remember, God, as we met here this morning, your love was so real and your spirit so present. Each of our hearts have been affected by it. Now all the needs, all the hope, desires of God, the desires of your people, God, we place it in your hands. We ask you to continue to touch Brother Scott, God, and others that need that healing this morning. We love you, we honor and we praise you, and we do it always in Jesus' name. Amen.